What's up, guys? It's your girl, Kia, and welcome back to the Insecure Cafe, where we are covering the season finale of Insecure called Low-Key Lost. There is a lot to talk about, and I'm glad I have my favorite mocha marbles that I'm going to miss now that the season's over. So let me introduce my wonderful panel. It would be Miss Keisha Boyd. Hi, everybody. Happy Juneteenth. Yes, happy Juneteenth. And the wonderful, amazing, super smart Dr. Jen Dobson. Hi, I am low-key feeling myself this week. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can definitely tell. And our wonderful and amazing super producer, Shalette Davis. Good morning, everyone. Have a great weekend. <laughs> yes, have a great weekend. And I am, I'm going to miss Insecure. I think this was a great season of all the seasons people are saying. This has been their best season. So I kind of agree with that. But I was mad about the ending, but we'll get to there. So first off, Lawrence gets the job in San Francisco, and Issa actually has a reasonable response to him that I thought was so smart and mature and growth. I mean, Sheila, didn't you like her response to him? I loved it because the thing is, you can you can have a long distance relationship whenever um, you're older and you you're really taking someone seriously. So I was really happy that you know she was willing to try and he was open to it, of course, because you know they definitely have something there. And they need to explore it. Yeah, I agree. Jen? Yes, it was so cute. I actually did, like, I thought that she would be like, ah, you know, I'm not really live, leaving the city. Like, this is my home. This is where I know everything. And for her to say, like, you know, we can make this work and you never know what might happen. I was like, okay, okay, go, Issa. You know, growing up. <laughs> I thought it was very mature of her too. And and I, I love that about it. And I was gonna talk, let's talk, we can talk about Nathan and, and um Issa, but that's such a small scene and we got so much important stuff to get to. So next, Molly and Andrew. Molly is working my last nerve more than ever before. She does not see how narcissistic or self-centered she is. They're at this work event, he's there, he's having a good time with her, he's interacting with her coworkers, he's tired, like a lot of us would be, and still she wants more from him. She wouldn't even let the poor man watch a missing with Latoya, a lost Latoya, or looking for Latoya. Keisha, that was messed up. And how does she not see this? Because she's selfish. <laughs> I mean, okay, that, that's, that's, that's a dumb question. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I mean, she's she's selfish and wants things her way. So, you know, I I was for one like, okay, Andrew, get you some backbone. I love it. Thank you. I tell her that you have been sacrificing and and putting up with doing how she, what she wants to do, how she wants to do it, when she wants to do it. And you're tired of it. You know, like there's a breaking point. Everybody has a breaking point. And apparently that work event and her pushing and having an attitude because he didn't want to hang out was his breaking point. Like, what have you done to extend yourself, you know, to, to amend things with my brother, my brother, nothing. You know what I mean? So I was- And you I, don't want to bring up, yeah, about that. Mm -hmm. I don't think she understands the difference. I don't think she understands what the word letting things go mean. Right. Just because you're now being rude and nasty in a avoiding situation doesn't mean you've let anything go. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Like, you haven't let anything go. You're just like, oh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. He's not my friend. This person did this. I'm done. You being done, that's not letting things go, right? It's kind so of immaturity. It's immaturity. Yes. Shalom, what do you have to say? Anything? No, it is. You, no, you're right. It is a sign of immaturity. Just because you're cutting somebody off doesn't mean that you've dealt with that emotionally. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for, you know, she, she behaves like a child and that's what we expect from her. Yeah. And I think that, um, she's gotten away with it for so long that she thinks that it's normal, um, because people kind of walk on eggshells for her and do things the way that she wants to do things. And she kind of, she's like the leader of the pack and people let her do that. And, and enough is enough. Andrew's like, um, you never concede. You never do anything that I need you to do or would like you to do. So I was proud of him. I think she's gotten away with a lot because she is the black girl everybody should aspire to be. She's, right. excuse me, she's a great lawyer <clears throat> with a great body. She's got the fan, like she's doing everything that most black women would think they'd want. And she's probably thinking, well, I've done everything else. So I must be, I must be perfect. Like she's building it up in her mind, but I can't wait to see how they go from here with her for next season. But I'm glad, like you said, that Andrew stuck up for himself finally. Cause I was wondering when is this going to happen? Like, are you guys going to get married and finally you speak up? Cause Goodness gracious, she'll let you look you're about to explode. What's up? Well, no, my question is because I almost I, I almost stopped and um reround that scene because I mean, did they break up? She was crying. Is it over? Is it over? I mean, I'm, I'm still unclear. I am unclear. 
That was an unclear belief. We have not gotten there yet, so let us okay, get I'm <laughs> So the next scene we see is, forget looking for Latoya, we are now looking for Tiffany. And I want to have a real conversation about postpartum depression. And I know people didn't really like this whole scene running around, they didn't get it. But it was kind of letting Issa and Molly know, you guys can't cut each other off. You guys still have really close mutual friends who are going to force to be around each other. I also think it showed Molly that no one's perfect. We're all trying to figure things out. And it showed Molly, Issa's done a lot for you. And you kind of forgot about all these moments. But speaking of the postpartum thing, and you know, Keisha, you, you've given birth. I'm a stepmother. I've never given birth. And, and Jen's given birth before. I don't think they take postpartum depression seriously in women. They have given it a cute name called the baby blues, which kind of makes it seem like, oh, it's just a little ass little thing. But Keisha, Jen, you guys have both given birth and that did you guys have to deal with anything like that? I didn't. Um, I, I mean, I, you know, I've, I had a great pregnancy delivery. I, I, didn't, I didn't suffer from postpartum depression at all. Um, however, I have friends and family that definitely have, like to, on Tiffany's level where they just don't want to be around the baby, don't want to be around the husband. They don't want to be anywhere near it. They're just like, oh, I just, I just can't. And it, and it lasts. And the last, you know, one person, oh my, you know, throughout the pregnancy and like two or three months after she had the baby until something finally clicked and, you know, it was like, hey, okay, all right. You know, I mean, it's a serious situation that people really need to, to pay attention. Now, I personally did not, you know, I wasn't excited about the scene. I understood the purpose of the scene, but I just think it took up too much time, personally. Yeah, I um, I didn't have postpartum either. Um, I had a really hard pregnancy. And I don't know, maybe because of that, when I had my son, I was like, yes. You know, because I, I was, you know, I was bedridden for five out of the nine, 10, you know, nine and a half, 10 months um, oh that I was, wasn't allowed to go anywhere. So I was really confined to my house. <laughs> so having my son was a blessing, you know, it was just a happy moment. Um, but I do know people that have gone through it that are very stressed over it. And we noticed Tiffany having postpartum issues in the previous um, yeah, episodes. Yeah. The um, festival because, scene. You started noticing the festival scene, which was like, I don't yeah. want to go home and be with the baby. I mean, yeah. you go home. You're fine. I'm going to stay. I'm having fun. Like, it was kind of like, a, okay, now we see where this is. This is, this is yeah. Happening. Yeah. It was, there were some clear signs. And I think because not enough people talk about it, I don't think her husband really understood how to get her the help that he needed, that she needed. So that part. But they did do a lot of running around. But I thought there were some key points in those scenes where, yes. you know, the, the bus scene and things like that, that I think were crucial to what's going on today. So I'm glad they put it in there, you know? And I just wanted to bring up the bus scene real quick. Um, I thought that was the weirdest but important kind of hodgepodge of, of different perspectives. Number one, the bus driver being so hardcore about the rules and couldn't stop, even though they, he sees they're kind of, you know, dealing with something. The white gay guy who was all about being sister girl until he wasn't reciprocated against. It was a weird scene of all these different perspectives, even the cops' perspectives. Like, Gillette, what are your thoughts on that? No, I mean, I thought it was a weird scene. I mean, the whole segment, you know, um, was kind of just thrown in there. It was kind of like, let's just wrap this up, we'll put a bow on it for the season. Um, and I, I'm just glad that the the scene with the cops didn't go left, and it, and it didn't go left because they had a you know group of you know college educated black women who knew their rights, and Molly's a lawyer, and she stepped in, and they stepped back. So um, unfortunately, you know, many of us aren't as fortunate as they were in this scene, but I understand the meaning of it, and um, I I thought it was definitely uh, relevant to what's going on right now. No, absolutely. So now Molly and Andrew have the conversation and you can just tell in his face, he is just, he look, I've never seen a man look more disgusted at somebody in my entire life. He looked disgusted with her. Like, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found your friend, but what's the point? Like, what, what are you looking for? What do you want? And she couldn't even answer him, which means you like the way it looked having somebody. You didn't really want to be with this man. Mm. Keisha? I agree. I agree. She liked the optics of it, but you know, it may have been a turning point where she understood. Yes. You know, 
just like you said, she's like the optics, you know, being able to take somebody somewhere, not being the person that's single going out to your work events. But is, is it a match? Probably not. You know, it just wasn't her thing. He wasn't hers and she wasn't his. And I tell people all the time, my friends have this, this thing all the time. Oh, he's such a great guy, but I just don't feel anything. I say, yeah, he's a good man. He's just not your good man. Let it go. Move on. He's a good man on paper. Oh, yeah, he's a good man. But I think Andrew was a good man. He's just mm -hmm. not her good man. It's just not a fit for her. Yeah. Period. Yeah, they weren't a fit from the beginning. I think they tried to make it work from the beginning. They both are attractive. They're both, um, you know, business oriented. They had a lot of things in common. They have a few mutual friends and things like that. So for that reason, they kind of like, you know, came together. But ultimately, I mean, because we remember when they first met, you know, and the first time they met, it was just kind of weird and awkward. And then I don't know how they ended up making it last this long. I don't know. It was just well, the whole so situation when they met, didn't they meet at Coachella and they all got high and drunk yeah. on ecstasy? It was just a hot mess from beginning uh, to uh, end. Uh, I mean, exactly. I put this question out there to want to give you guys an opinion. Do you think if Andrew would have stuck up for himself and showed a little bit more backbone earlier that Molly would have acquiesced maybe because she liked the way it looks and maybe their relationship would have been better or she would have already kicked him to the curb months ago? I, yeah, I, 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 them. So I think I think she I think the relationship would have been better because I think sometimes strong women like you know I'm I consider myself an alpha female and for me the only like I I'm a very strong dominant personality except for when there's another strong dominant personality and I know how to be like oh let me um ooh, what you say okay baby let me do that but <laughs> It requires a man who is strong and dominant and puts his foot down. Like, you're not going to walk all over me. And if Andrew would have done that from the beginning and would have been a little more strong with her and, and showed her, like, I'm the man here, then she might have, you know, conceded now and again. At least not, not every time, but now and again. Gillette yeah. thinks you're silly for thinking this because I can tell with the look on her no, face. No, I don't think, no, I don't think you're silly. I don't, because the thing is, I can, to I can totally relate, even though I don't, I don't present as alpha. I'm hella alpha. Um, we know that. That wasn't a secret. Right. <laughs> Shut up. So um, I think that just because Molly's accustomed to getting her way, it just, it wouldn't have worked for her in the beginning. I almost feel like a guy does need to kind of like, kind of like come in there, be the supportive man, whatever. And then later on, once she's like solidify her feelings for him, that's when he needs to like, you know, knock her aside the head with the caveman <laughs> bat and throw her over his shoulder. Um, otherwise she's just gonna she's gonna snap like and react like she's always been in her relationships and that's why she's probably gonna be single for a long time. Yeah. So we have arrived. Now, I would like all of you ladies to tell me, Kia, you were right. I wanna hear it in unison. Let's go. <laughs> I wanna hear it. One, Kia. two, three. Kia, you're you right. right. Thank you. Kia yes, I was right. <laughs> canola oil, can, can, what did you call her? Canola virus. Uh, condone, like, she, this girl has so many names. Condo, Condoleezza. <laughs> Condoleezza rice. Um, condola, yeah, no. Condola, no. Condola, condola is pregnant. pregnant. Condola and Lawrence are pregnant. Lawrence did the right thing. He came over and, and talked to Issa about it. And of course, Issa is devastated. And you see the side by side of Condola telling him his reaction and him telling Issa, and I like the way they did the juxtaposition of that. I blame this a thousand percent on Lawrence, and not for the reasons why you think. This girl called you two weeks ago, maybe, maybe more, to have a conversation. And I think at that point, if they would have had the conversation then, they may have reconsidered having the child. They may have been like, this isn't the right thing. But you left that girl alone to her own thoughts, maybe her own friends, her own whoever go, you know what? I am 30 something years old. I, I want this. This is for me. This has nothing to do with you. This is for me. And now he's here. I think he should have had the conversation with her a while ago. And maybe things might have been a little bit different. And it might have been easier for him to tell Issa. I'm ready for anybody's conversation on this because this is going to be a good portion of this review. A few things. Okay. I agree. Yeah. She had time to sit and meddle. Uh, not meddle, but just sit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, absolutely. And her mind probably flipped a thousand times on what she should do, how many emotions she probably went through thinking that he was avoiding her. 
you know, not to mention if Issa may have posted pictures, you know, anything could have happened where she's Ooh, like, oh, about that. back with Issa. And, I, and she already thought that Issa was a threat before. Like, right. she low-key thought that Issa was a situation when her and Lawrence were together. Mm-hmm. So, one, she had to sit with that, right? Figure it out on her own type of situation. Got in her mind state, made up her mind. Now, I definitely appreciate and think, once again, they're showing maturity on, on Lawrence's part by going over there saying, hey, look, this is the situation I want to tell you right away. And I, and one, because, I, I mean, he, I, obviously he cares for Issa. He wants to be with Issa. So he had to, all right, do his, his Usher Confessions moment, right? And this is such an Usher confession song moment. If this was another video, this was it, right? And so... <laughs> um, Absolutely, it's his fault, and but but I don't think Issa can be that mad. She cannot be upset about it because it happened before, and either she's gonna have to warm it up and say, you know what, I still want to be with this man, and and I'm gonna be there for him during this situation, or not. It's no in between. She has to make a decision, and it's on her because the condola has decided that she wants to do this, um, and I, I don't think that Lawrence is the character that's going to be like, play her to the left and not be it, you know, be in, in the kid's life. But right. I definitely think that, you know, Issa has to make that decision. I think if she says I'm in, then her and Lawrence will be fine. Yeah. Well, my issue that I have is with the fact that Condola and Lawrence stated that they were careful. What the heck does careful mean? Right. Either you're going to get somebody pregnant or you're not. There is no careful. There's 30,000 birth control options out there. You got plan B, you got condoms, you got (laughs) IUDs, you got everything under the sun to be careful. Yeah, pull out on camera. Yeah, and so it didn't make any sense for Lawrence, who clearly can have children, Condola, who clearly can have children, to be careless. And I think that that was the biggest thing, because in the way that I feel about it, as, as men, if you do not want a child, you should make sure that you do everything you can to not have a child in whatever capacity that is. So I felt like they were being very irresponsible and it's unfortunate that now he's in a situation where he's going to have a baby that he doesn't really want to have. And it's not fair to the kid. No, that, that was my biggest thing. That's not fair to the kid. Even when she said, you can be, and I hate when girl women say this, you can be as involved as you want. Or, you know, it's, it, this is for me. You don't have to be involved. That's for you, crazy lady. There's a child who's going to wonder, where's my dad? Like, why does my dad want to be around? Like, yeah, my dad hated you, but why do you want to be around me? Like, I think it's weird when women, I guess they think that that statement's a nice statement of letting you off the hook, but now you're messing your child up. Right. Uh, You know, and by the way, public service announcement, pulling out is not a form of birth control or how to be safe. Well, let's... Technically, withdrawal is a form of birth control recognized by the... What is? Withdrawal is... I mean, it's a box you check. What kind of birth control are you on? Withdrawal, it is. There are several shirts floating around right now for Father's Day that says, pull out game, weak as... Okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, that only works. Pull out only works like I think it's 50% or 50. Y'all, no, we're not going. Uh, we are not having a whole birth control episode about we're why pull out or. Whole episode, but all we're saying is don't right. be Lawrence. Don't do it. Right. So now we have an episode with, of course, Issa saying it's too much. It's never defined what's, what that means or where they're going. She just said it's too much. So it, the episode ends with. Uh, Molly and Issa coming back together and a lot of people were celebrating this about no they need each other I didn't think this was a celebration I was like oh so they're both back in the crapper and now they have to be friends again because they're they're single and lonely and upset about their lives and unhappy this should not be a friendship if misery loves company were a a, a graphic that was it yeah Uh, she lost her man she lost her man Issa don't know if she gonna have a man you know, but, but with all that said, Issa, I mean, they are best friends. When things are going good and bad, you share that with your best friend. And for both of them, 
they feel comfortable being vulnerable around each other and to each other. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that it's necessarily all selfish, but it's a comfort it's a comfort zone. It's a comfort zone. Now, if they can realize and recognize that that they do need each other for those those moments of weakness, those moments of vulnerability, but you know, also on Molly's part, realize that okay, I have to be here for my friend and celebrate her, support her, even if I'm not needed, then they'll be okay. They'll be okay. I mean, they need each other. Yeah, they do. I mean, the the title of the whole show is Insecure. They're both insecure within each other. They're insecure in other relationships. They're insecure in their friendships. And if they can realize that they they need other people, whether it's each other or their other friends, they'll do okay. But they like 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 um Keisha said, like at the end of the day, like they have to recognize like that we need to be there to support each other in good and bad. Not just bad. It can't be like, oh, we're both messy, so now let's let's <laughs> yeah, talk about our yeah. mess together. Like yeah. it's a little it's a little much. So that was Insecure season 10 finale. I mean, I'm I'm going to miss these reviews. We're definitely gonna include them next time there's insecure back on. I wish. I wish our producer would allow us to do it on other black shows, but I don't think she's gonna let us. Look, folks are tired now. <laughs> Look, if I had kids, this would have been done a long time ago. A oh, long time ago. Cut it out. <laughs> cut it out. Well, either way, it was great doing Insecure Review. Thank you guys so much for the comments. It's been amazing. We can't wait to see you next season, not only for Insecure Cafe, but for Milk in the Morning. So we oh, love you guys. We'll see you next season. Bye. Bye. Get you some Juneteenth fun, people. Yes, get you some Juneteenth fun. Happy Celebrate. Juneteenth. Go, um, go pick it at the Trump rally. That's a good place to spend, uh, spend your Juneteenth. Don't send those people out there with it. Okay. <laughs>